All right, Fulcrum of Truth. How you doing today? Pretty good. Pretty it's good. morning. Morning yeah. recording. Yeah, new. Usually we're going uh, in the evening, so this will be the first time. Yeah. Um, today I wanted to talk about a topic that I, you know, we have the whiteboard of ideas, and you wrote one up there yesterday or the day before uh, that I've just been itching to jump into because <clears> I, <throat> I don't think we've really even talked about it uh, one-on-one not that much, not as much as we've discussed other other topics, but you wrote the word aliens up there. Yeah, I mean, I, I everybody is into aliens and everybody has their own ideas about them, uh, speculating whether they exist or not. And uh, we actually just recently had the UFO up north, right? That they uh, that they shot down or they that went down and they weren't able to recover it. You said, oh, uh, yeah, they say they weren't able to recover it. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know how uh, conspiratorial I get into it, but um, I think that first first thing I want to do is like define what you mean by aliens, right? Because words mean things, and different words mean different things to different people. And we've talked about dependability of past knowledge and how words can mean different things uh, in the current lexicon. Uh, so what is what is your definition of an alien? And I'll share my definition of an alien, and, and then we can proceed from there, I think. So, you yeah. know, so everybody understands exactly what we're talking about when we say alien. Well, I mean, I think there's, uh, I think it's pretty, pretty clear to most people, right, that the general definition being an alien is someone that uh, is a species or a, some type of being that comes from off planet. Right, a real alien would be off planet. So anything that comes from another planet, another solar system, another galaxy, somewhere else in the universe that was to come here, uh, I don't know if we would call an interdimensional being an alien per se. So I think that when we're talking about aliens right now, we're talking about aliens that are, uh, you know, off world. Okay, so you actually just created a third category. I was going to say <laughs> I have two categories of alien that I can um, describe. And so the first, the most, in the most basic definition for me, it's a a life form that originated not on earth. Okay. Uh, Or it could be a life form that originated on earth and left earth. Okay. Okay. Um, That would still qualify as an alien for me. But within that, I have two categories, right? There's the um, bacteria or like virus or some sort of like primitive life form. Oh, okay. And then there is intelligent life, like an extraterrestrial intelligence. Um, And then now you just added for me interdimensional beings. Well, I wouldn't say. Okay, so I would say that I would call that a third category. I wouldn't put that. Let's let's not put that in our alien conversation. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I think we leave that out. We'll we'll talk about that later. All right. Um, But yeah, for me, there's, right, there's alien life. And then there's extraterrestrials, which are like an intelligent life outside of anywhere outside of Earth, really. I I would consider a life form on Venus to be an alien. Yeah, I think I think that's a good point to categorize them the way you did, because uh, I didn't consider that before you said it. The idea and and. And to be honest, which I do believe that out there we might find extremely microscopic life or single cell organisms that might have sparked into existence, that would, but go right out. And uh, if that was to be the case, then it's kind of like our existence is that rare occasion where that simple life that does spark off every so often was able to evolve and get to the point where we've gotten. And that those, you know, I wouldn't classify those microscopic uh, organisms or, or bacteria or viruses that are existing out there for brief moments of time as necessarily life because as aliens, it's life, but it's not aliens per se. Like we're talking about, right? We're talking okay, about like, so you want to beings. talk about intelligent life. Yeah. I think that's outside the idea. of Earth. when I, when I wrote okay. it on the whiteboard, the idea is aliens is, uh, is I think when people have the conversation, it's like beings out there that might even be hyper intelligent compared to us and you know, okay. space travel and all that kind of stuff. Good. I, th- I think that's a good like groundwork for us because it is important to describe exactly what you're talking about. When you yeah. say the word alien, it, it can conjure a lot of things. And frankly, like alien life could be something we can't even imagine or we haven't even imagined yeah right like yeah. swarms and yeah i, I mean well, sci-fi I looked... has written about a lot of different types of aliens we're talking about an intelligent life form of similar makeup mm-hmm. to us 
I don't know about similar. I mean, it could be of any makeup, right? We don't know what, what form their body is going to be. And I don't think, uh, but I have, so could they be microscopic? Well, not microscopic. I'm saying okay. it has to have uh, advanced intelligence to be able to like maybe space travel what, and stuff like that. Who says that a microscopic being can't be intelligent? Oh, uh, well, when I say microscopic, I'm talking extremely low intelligence as well. So it's like it has microscopic to me means basic life functions. Like all it knows how to do is like eat shit. Okay. Sleep. Right. Okay. Yeah. So right. We're talking about it. All no, right. So intelligent. Life. Let's, yeah. Let's, and intelligent well, life could send a swarm of nanobots sure sure right if they were that advanced and yeah. you know knowing well, or talking... thinking we know limitations about travel through the universe yeah uh it would make sense to um transit the universe at a very small mass right so yeah. if, if you wanted to populate or explore another world it would make sense to make a very low mass explorer i would right? i would a, beg a, to differ. a million nanobots i would beg to differ because uh due to you know from what we understand about space and there not being any resistance right it might not take more energy to move a large mass through space as it takes to move smallest mass mass so if i'm going to move across use the energy to move across space i'm going to bring as much with me as i can i'm, I'm pretty so, confident in f equals ma uh, yeah so if you have a bigger <laughs> mass you need you need more force well, but, it, but we'll, you know, we can die. Either way, that's that another subject, right? <laughs> uh, so, but either way, I, I, my take on aliens, right, is it, I think is a very, um, it's a little bit of a uh, unique take on them, you know, and I think it's going to surprise you a little bit because, like you said, you. Never I want to hear it. I don't. Well, think no, I want to. I want you to yeah. go first because it is oh, so you unique. Want me to go yeah, first, so okay. you go ahead and go first, and uh, and then after, yeah, you give your your uh, your belief in aliens, and then I'll uh, I'll give mine. Okay. Where I sit on aliens. We're either as defined, as we defined aliens, uh, an intelligent mm -hmm. life form. You know, it, the immediate question is, do you think aliens have visited us? Mm -hmm. And I think in all probability it's possible. Although I wouldn't say it's probable and I would say the likelihood that it is currently going on is unlikely. Okay. My view is that possibly aliens did visit Earth at some point. Um, you know, you hear a lot of the, the fringe science and, and people, the ancient astronaut stuff and whatnot. And I think that it is entirely possible. I, I, I do see an incredible jump from primates to human. Uh, and that could have been engineered by an alien species, right? Okay. So if an alien species visited Earth 200,000 years ago or whenever, whenever the human race uh, emerged on Earth, it, I, I do think it's possible that the human race emerged as a result of genetic engineering by an intelligent life form from another area. They came here, engineered our DNA to make us more intelligent and conscious and, and aware and smarter. And then, then they left for whatever reason, and maybe they'll come back. I don't see a whole lot of evidence uh, for a current visitation or op... They could be observing, right? And when you get into the idea of interdimensional beings, you know, they can hide, mm -hmm. right? If they can hide in another dimension so that we don't see them and only appear when they need to interact, uh, it's possible. Like, you, you hear a lot of abduction stories and, you know, UFO, or I think they call them UAPs now, right? I mean, yeah. they're really getting... Well, um, you, actually, what you just said is interesting. I just watched a video yesterday about how uh, a guy was saying when we hunt or do research on animals that are less intelligent than us, we camouflage ourselves, right? We hide in the environment. We make it disguise ourselves so they don't know that we're there. So if there was a higher intelligent life form than us doing research on us or observing us, obviously they would hide in plain sight and make it so we couldn't see them exactly like you were just saying. Yeah, exactly. When when you go out to hunt a deer, you don't 
do jumping jacks, right? You sit yeah. still, yeah. you, well, you wear orange, but they're colorblind, but yeah. right. You know, this, the you know that the deer you. is colorblind. So it doesn't yeah. matter what color you're wearing. It's about being still and blending into the background and letting them just wander up to you. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, uh, a higher intelligence than us could do the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So you, so you like the idea of, uh, of it's very possible that aliens were out there they contacted earth they may have even started the human race or sparked off the human race with some manipulation or something gary i know nothing i hear I you. know nothing i hear you i just wanted to come back i think i think it's possible i think it's possible um i think the leap between primates and humans is significant uh and possibly not natural uh now you know that can get back into our um previous discussion of god you know, God created humans and, and made us the way that we are. But you could also, that that idea also extends to God created these aliens and then these aliens yeah. created us, right? Yeah, so yeah. it doesn't discount anything that we've said previously. It's just that uh, we don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I certainly don't know. Yeah, yeah. But is that your, uh, so this the, the topic being like, what do you believe? What do you think is most likely the case? I think most likely there is intelligence within the universe. The universe is so vast. I, and I've told you before, and we've talked a little bit about James Webb telescope and stuff like that outside of the galaxy. I forget about it. I don't, I don't yeah. listen to anything that anybody says that's happening outside the galaxy because the galaxy yeah. is so huge. Um, and we know nothing about it to be looking any further than that is, is, for me right now, absurd. Yeah. Um, someday maybe we'll get there and maybe we have some learnings. But for me, I think we need to look even just within our own solar system um, and then to our closest neighbor stars and things like that because we can't even take a picture of, um, you know, an asteroid properly. Yeah. I just saw some photos just came up of, oh, we found this asteroid that, whatever significance it had. I I don't even, I wasn't impressed, but there were photos of it. And it, I mean, they're like, they're like a 1999 cell phone picture. What could you really learn from it? Exactly. What what, what are you, what, what are you really saying here? I, I, it's funny you say that too. I just watched another video about, um, Venus. It was a long documentary. I went to sleep to the other night about how the, um, finally sent probes into Venus and did some research, some actual tangible research on it. And, like every other case that we ever review, when they hit splash down, they learn that everything they thought about the planet was wrong. Exactly. And, and, uh, and it was amazing all the changes they discovered on this planet. You know, it was, it was nothing like they thought it was. And this re- reversed this idea. And this reversed this idea. And this reversed this idea. And it just goes to show, like, that's going to happen every time you land a satellite on a planet. Every time you actually take a real measurement. And then that data that you take and you extrapolate ideas from and all that, you're going to go there for the first time and find out all that was wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just a, it's an evolution of learning, you know what I mean? And, and to, to ever think that we're in the point at which we do know is just so naive, you know? It's, there's always going to be another step of learning. Yeah, and that, that actually, you know, reminds me of one of my favorite things to chuckle about, and I've told you about it before, that... um I think it was a Netflix documentary on flat earthers and you know, it gets dismissed as these people are quacks and crazy and I don't believe the earth is flat. Uh, but at the end of that documentary, they do, they do this laser test where they say like, Oh, if the earth is flat, we're going to be able to, we're going to be able to see this laser. They have a big, like, it's basically poster board. It's so cheap um, on a stick and they hold it up and they're like, if the earth is flat, the laser beam is going to hit on, on here and we're going to be able to see it. And they do the test and um, it's the very end of the documentary. They do the test and the laser doesn't hit the thing. And they say, Oh, well, if the earth is round, then the laser should hit like, six feet up in the air and so they raise it up six feet up in the air and the laser blasts right on <laughs> yeah, it I remember. and i'm just like it's hilarious yeah, yeah uh but and and it's 
it's put out there as, oh, these people are crazy, but the reality is that real science is like that, right? <laughs> Where you are just shocked, like, huh, I didn't expect that result. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're right, you're right. But it's funny, they, uh, so we don't know. I mean, we'll continue to learn about aliens too in the same way, you know, whatever, these all these UFOs we hear, you know, hear about on Earth and everything. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what to make of UFOs. Um, oh, I do. All right, let's hear it. All right, so that's what I was surprised you didn't tie in. So one time, many times in conversations about aliens, people don't tie in the UFO phenomena, right? You say, hey, do you believe in extraterrestrials? Do you believe in alien life? And they go and say, just like you did, they have some explanation or some slice of the variation of what they believe. Uh, but mine accounts for the UFOs, you know? Okay. And one of the things about the UFOs that's really peculiar, and I use that word because I'm trying to practice using it, it's very hard to say, <laughs> peculiar, <laughs> um, is that, is that uh, they never get seen zooming in from outer space or zooming out to outer space, okay? They always get seen going into the water and coming out of the water. So my true belief on aliens is that rather than there being extraterrestrial life outside of Earth, there's extra, actually interterrestrial life. And there is aliens that live beneath the oceans. So if there was an ancient civilization that had gained the ability to live under the oceans or underground much better than we do, right? This would protect them from earthquakes, tsunamis, solar flares, uh, hurricanes, tornadoes, any type of natural event that was an extinction event that occurred on the surface of the earth wouldn't be able to touch them necessarily if they were protecting themselves under the earth correctly, okay? Now, this would also be hard for us to discover because we do not map and explore the bottoms of the oceans, really, when it's only 10 kilometers down from the surface, right? It's not very far at all for life to go down there. It's not, but to us, and this, this reveals like our infancy in scientific uh, development, that... For us, 10 kilometers down in the ocean is really challenging. Yeah, right. Uh, we do it. We've mm -hmm. gone to the depths of the ocean, but man, yeah, exploring it and trying to put a life form down there is just yeah. seems out of reach for us right now. Yeah, so it would be very easy for a civilization to hide down there from us per se, if they, if they were able to survive down there. And you look back across the, you know, the civilizations that have been on Earth, we've seen ancient technologies that are advanced, right? So it's not as hard to say that maybe they didn't survive in some way, right? Through cataclysmic events that would have taken out all of the surface to the point where they stayed down there until the Earth began to get to the point that life could come back on the surface. And when by the time life does come back on the surface, they decide we don't want to go up there. You know, like it's too dangerous up there. We don't know what's up there or in a, unable to survive up here, right? It could be like space to them because they've been down there so long surviving on that for so long. They evolved their bodies, right? To the pressures, everything. If you take a fish from the bottom of the ocean and bring it up to the surface, right? This thing dies. It, it bloats up, explodes, and can't survive. So if you were to bring any type of life form from down there and bring it up without a special capsule like they, you might see, uh, they wouldn't be able to survive in our in our pressures. So that's one thing, right? Now, the UFOs we see diving in and out of the water, that could easily be their craft, you know, easily be their 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 uh, ability to come and check us out and where we see them go. Uh, it would just it would it would it would uh, explain that, as well as I believe you said something about that UFO they couldn't find that just went down. I don't, yeah, first of all, the media, I, I know, just I know. Yeah. give me a break, right? Uh, it, like they're, they're writing articles that people yeah. want to read and, you know, they're, that's marketing. They're selling something. I don't, not that there aren't unbiased uh, reporting out there, but I take everything from the media with a grain of salt. Yeah. Um, but they shot down these balloons or other objects recently right they you know we have the chinese balloon at least that's what it's sold to us as mm -hmm. um and then there were three others i i think it was three others maybe two others um but yeah all of them got shot down over bodies of water and all of them they have 
kind of walked back and said, oh, it's a difficult area to recover. Oh, yeah. One one was off the coast of Alaska. One was up in, like, the Canadian tundra. And one was in one of the Great Lakes. And all of them, the report was, oh, don't expect any findings anytime soon. These are very difficult places to recover. Like, come on. The Great Lake is not that deep. Hmm. Um we we've been down to the titanic like you can't you're gonna tell me you can't get to the bottom of the great lake and find this thing right well these are the reports from the government and Mm. even the government i I just take what they say with a grain of salt you can't you know obviously maybe they don't know uh and maybe that's their motivation like hey we don't know like we should probably figure out what's going on first just in case it is something we don't want to have like a live television special where we raise this thing to the surface and it's an alien ship people are going to go crazy Mm -hmm. um even though i think that's very unlikely uh or you know as you suggested if if there is an alien uh not they wouldn't be alien. Uh, under yeah, my definition, they wouldn't be that's alien. That's another thing. Yeah, if I, they I need lived. to clarify that. So by by oh. my definition of what we think aliens are and what I believe aliens to be, I do believe that there are not extraterrestrial aliens. I do not believe there's life up, off of Earth. I do believe that Anywhere. Earth, yeah, no, I do not believe. Yeah, so, so the my, whole universe, the whole galaxy, you think we're, we're the only life. Yeah, but that's, that's much a lot to do with my beliefs with God, but also my beliefs in we're not seeing what we believe we see out there. You know, oh, like I, that, I fully, yeah, fully so agree. When, you know, uh, that's I, why I say like yeah. looking outside of the galaxy, I think is just yeah, like, I don't, not I don't have enough belief in the infinite space of the universe to believe in a chance for life because of infinite. You know, like the the infinite nature of the universe, I believe, is not a spatial infinite. Right. I, I a, barely trust what yeah. they say about our solar system. Yeah. So with that, with that being said, you know, I, I, so the aliens and the off-world life that we talked about at the beginning of the video being the definition for aliens, for me, the definition of aliens and what we've perceived as human beings as aliens or alien spacecraft has come from inner Earth, and it is like a civilization that most likely lives under the oceans and uh, is ancient and is more advanced than us and uh has been there for a long time a long lot longer than our human race has been uh surviving here almost as though it could be a deviation from us and uh this also goes into the duality of what i understand so um you know oh man that just puts an idea in my head well the duality just being that real quick that uh you know there could be beings that live on the surface of the earth that breathe that breathe uh air you know and breathe oxygen the way we do you know and live up here and then there could be a subsurface uh, life form that's just as advanced as uh, human beings that could be the duality of us that we're underwater beings you know yeah that that just put an idea in my head that I've never really thought about but it would be a lot easier to build that great pyramid underwater <laughs> if you were 10 kilometers underwater and had all that buoyancy you could move those rocks a lot easier and we know or we think we know that the crust on the earth moves or that we do say certain, I think the Sahara is said to be like a former ocean. So So if you built this pyramid underwater, it would be a heck of a lot easier than building it on land. That is a, and then it moves and now it's not underwater and it's left. And then, you know, as the water recedes, as the the levels of the water go down, you're left with this pyramid sitting on the bottom of what used to be. The water doesn't really go down. The earth, the crust just moves and it becomes. Absolutely. Either way. Either way. Yeah. yeah, Either way. If it was, uh, if the earth was flooded for a long time and there was a lot more water, right? Water evaporates, right? We don't know what the earth used to be. Yeah. Well, I can only go by, you know, scientific evidence. And the reality is our in the range of temperatures that have been that they think have been experienced on earth mm-hmm. we're kind of in the middle mm-hmm. it's been much hotter yeah and it's been much colder yeah. um and when i say much that might only be i don't know five degrees celsius or something but but that's a significant change when you're talking about right around the freezing point of water right if you're talking about zero celsius negative five and plus five that's a major difference in 
water levels. Well, not just that. I mean, yeah. I'd be curious to find out how high above sea level the pyramids are in Giza. You know? Oh, I don't think very high. Yeah. So, I mean, how high would the water level have to go to cover I mean, the pyramids? There, at least Giza is relatively close to the Mediterranean, right? Yeah. Within a couple hundred miles. So I don't think it's a huge elevation. I, I'd be surprised if it's more than 5,000 feet yeah. above sea level. Now, just to just to clarify for everybody watching, yeah. you know, this is the way we talk, and it's uh, you can you can see it's a little far it's far reaching, you know, to talk about the pyramids being built underwater, you know, without oh, we've doing ne- much, and we've never yeah. talked about this before. Yeah. This is just totally us, and we and we, and we haven't done much yeah. research on it, right? But this is something that we would keep in our mind as just like a catalog card of all right here was an idea that we had and if there's any other evidence we ever see throughout our time of doing research that somehow parallels this we might add it to that card and be like all right and start filling out that card it may turn into a real theory over time while we do research or it may not and get completely thrown out because we've seen nothing but evidence contrary to it but being able to have these ideas outside the box and being able to talk about these things freely without having the constraints of uh judgment from academia or being thrown out because this is what you're researching today i think that's like a main point of being able to do science in a way that reveals the things that we haven't discovered yet and uh and i just want to clarify clarify that for everybody like uh you know it's not that we believe these things it's just that we're willing to talk about them and, and entertain the idea of it yeah exactly and it's we really clicked on something here because i my mind is just working i can see okay if we have an ancient uh, life form here on earth that lives underwater, which we know we've, I, I'm pretty sure we've explored the surface of the moon more than we've explored the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. Um, I'll go out on a limb and say we have, mm-hmm. uh, even the backside of the moon. I think we've sent probes and photoed it and things like that. So, uh, we have places here on earth that are completely unexplored and, if there was a civilization down there, an ancient civilization, maybe they still exist, maybe they don't still exist. But we do believe life emerged from water. That's that's the current scientific theory, right? And yeah. tide pools and, and life emerged there. So it makes sense that it could develop there. This is that ties directly into where the theory came from for me, is that uh, life would have evolved in the water. So uh, you make me kind of flash back to the research I was doing. And what they talk about is how the, the uh, surface of the earth was uninhabitable at first, right? The gases were toxic. It wasn't life started and radiation, in the water. radiation too. Like, you yeah. know, going back to my, well, let me finish. So yeah. in the water is where life formed, right? So if intelligent life formed underwater and then the surfacing atmosphere became uh, habitable for life to come out of the water onto the land, right? It could have easily split, and had half of it go onto land, evolving onto land, and then what was already formed in the water, it would have been more advanced than the things forming on land because that was all new life, right? Learning to breathe oxygen, learning to breathe things in an open, open gas environment, whereas the underwater creatures would have already gained that advanced, uh, you know, level of evolution. And yeah, it, it it's it's uh, what you just said is a key point in the theory that I came up with for aliens being underground. Yeah, under under under. under. Yeah, and the idea of advanced life developing underwater makes sense. Um, going back to my, you know, nuclear experience, and I don't, I don't remember exactly, and we can kind of look it up, but there, there's certain materials we use to shield um, people from the radiation created in the reactor, right? Um, one of those is lead. Lead is a good shield. Um, boron is a good shield water is one of the best shields Mm -hmm. and then we try to use steel but it's kind of like one inch of lead and don't quote me on this because i don't remember the numbers but one inch of lead is equivalent to like two inches of water is equivalent to like a foot of steel Mm -hmm. okay so water is actually a very good shield for you know some types of radiation and if you are in an uninhabitable environment, whether it's because the gases are poisonous or radiation from the sun, mm-hmm. right? We don't, the evolution of the sun and, and how it became and the amount of radiation that is, that we're exposed to, like at this point, the earth has evolved to have this magnetic 
field around it, we think, mm-hmm. uh, and that deflects a lot of the radiation and protects us. But that may not have been the case uh, in the past. And so it it's not outside the realm of possibility that a civilization or a life, an advanced life form did, um, you know, originate or evolve under the sea that we've yeah. just never had contact with. Maybe they no longer exist or maybe they, you know, maybe they're struggling. I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, we go, there's a, the two fish is a, is a big symbol in mythology and, and everything going back. 10,000 years as as old as human history is we have used two fish or a fish even as a symbol of life okay it would be hard to argue that that wasn't some way tied to us coming from the water you know i mean you go back forever and that's what you find yeah but i think we can agree that we have uh, if we did evolve from something like that, we have diverged so far at this point. Uh, obviously, humans can't breathe water, can't no. really can't live underwater for an extended period of time, whether it's mm-hmm. due to the pressure or just physically constructing objects underwater that are strong enough to resist that pressure. Um, but I can see a scenario where, A, a giant pyramid would be much easier to build underwater, right? Things feel lighter. Yeah, it, and those pyramids look like, oh well, we just took these blocks from a hundred miles away and just f- floated them, yeah, over to this location and piled them up, right? Yeah. So you build this pyramid underwater over millions of years, the water recedes, and now the pyramid is on the ground. Now yeah. you have this terrestrial life form come by and say, "Wow, what is we what just... is that thing? The gods must have sent oh, this to brother. us." So, so, so this is going to be a great. So this is uh, this is our conversations. This yeah. is a perfect example. So we're about to end our conversation. We're about 30 minutes in, right? And as we're talking about building pyramids underwater and floating heavy stones and all that, immediately my mind jumps to other research we've done, like, you know, that, the uh, Incas and the pyramids they built in the right. mountains. Yes, yes. The water probably was not that high. <laughs> That's... That's much higher up in the mountains. So I would say that due to the size of the megalithic stones that are, I think it's Machu Picchu, not Machu Picchu, but the the Aztecs, I think, either the Incas or the Aztecs got the pyramids in the skies out there, all right? The oldest ones with the largest stones, and they are at the top of the mountains. Are those, think... are those the oldest ones? Yeah. That's what they say? They, okay. were, they, they were not... I don't think they were floated up there, and I don't think that was underwater. Okay. So uh, I mean, maybe, maybe yeah. not. I, I I'm just spitballing here. No, I know, and, and I was, and I, and it was fun, right? It's like this is how we talk, but I think that that would be my, uh, you know, we talked about this catalog card, right? Now I need to write. All right, well, we I'm, got... I'm going to stop you right here for all a right. second because modern science. How how do we think mountains form? <laughs> oh man. How do we think mountains I form? I don't know. We might have to leave okay. this one. We, mountains this is a, fo- we think mountains form because plates on the earth come together and then they push up. Yeah. Okay? Mm-hmm. So just because it's up on the top of a mountain right now doesn't mean it was on the top of a mountain. <laughs> yes, it does. It's perfectly placed. <laughs> There's okay. can't fit a, Fair enough. <laughs> you can't fit a piece of... <laughs> I'm going to finish my thought. <laughs> Due to the fact that you cannot put a piece of paper <laughs> between the stones sitting at the top of this mountain, I'm going to say it probably did not get up there from plates hitting each other and pushing each other a thousand feet over this. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to end it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a great talk about aliens and uh, and some other cool things for sure. Yeah, man. Thanks. I really enjoyed it. All right. <laughs> Subscribe, like, leave a comment. Yeah. We'll see you guys later. Yep. Bye. <laughs> That was great. Now that was good at the end, right? It like it turned fucking comical. Oh my god.